right, so we're going to start out with our side pull here. If you remember the side pull, it has the braided nose band here, the rawhide nose band here. So we're going to put this on Samson. Since it's a one-piece rein, I'm going to go ahead and put that over his neck here first. And then we're going to go ahead and put the nose band over his nose. Pull it up here to where it's comfortable. Pull the ears through. We're going to take our throat latch here. We're going to put it up here. I'm using about the second button from the, or second hole from the top there. So I'm going to slide down. I'd like him to come further. I'm going to give a little bit of a jerk. Around to the side. Hence the name side pull. Now let's ride a little bit and you can get an idea of how this side pull works. Now, I'm not going to be forceful with this, but I'm going to put enough signal there where he knows I'm asking him to back up and lower his head. Each time he gives me a step, it's pull, release, pull, release, pull, release. Watch his head. I'm doing that with leg cues. Can lay that over there and give him that same cue with the legs. Remember that I told you that your hands and your reins control everything from the shoulders up. My feet are controlling that hind end. So once again, I want you to watch. I'm going to ask this horse not only to go back, but I'm going to ask him to drive backwards if you will, from the hind quarters. I cannot do that from the reins. As you see, when I pull the reins, he just goes straight back. What I want him to do is collect up now and move from that hind end, move those hind quarters. So watch my legs, my spur. I'll roll that, head goes down, the hip engages, the hind end engages. All right, now we have our Bozell. We're gonna put this on Samson again. It's one piece range, so we go ahead and put that over his neck there. Gently slide the Bozell. It should ride just right here on the muzzle, on the nose here. Fortunately for me, Samson's got two little knots here that he was born with. Kind of lets me know that I wanna come down below that, so that's sort of my, my guideline. Don't have to get out the magic marker there. I'm thinking about it, you might also notice that on most all of my reins I have a piece of duct tape on there. That duct tape's on there for a reason. It lets me know where my center point is. And this is a little loose. Like I said, we really need some more holes in this, but this will do for demonstration. So this right here is the duct tape I'm talking about. I always put a piece. Ladies, you'll love it. It comes in all different kinds of colors at Walmart, but I like this duct tape. I put it right in the center so Always when my hand's there or to the left or the right, I know that my reins are centered up. Again, gentle action. I'm going to remind him of what a bazelle feels like. With the bazelle, I can use a little more of an indirect reining if I want. When I do that, usually I'm using a little bit of leg. It's like giving my horse a hint of what I'm asking him to do. So I'm gonna ask my horse as we ride here to work off pressure on his nose. In the beginning, when you're working with a young colt, the only action that you have to control that nose is, remember, from the shoulders up, which means your range. Later, as your horse advances in his skills, and with the different various styles of bits, you can incorporate your legs to get that head in position where you want it. All right, now we're looking at the broken mouthpiece, or the snaffle bit, if you will, here. And remember, we talked about with the snaffle, bit or a broken mouthpiece like this on the on the D ring here. Remember the D shape here and then the circle. 
we're going to have direct rain. In other words, if I pull the rain to the left, my horse is going to go to the left. If I pull to the right, he's going to go to the right. I'll show you the difference in direct rain and indirect rain in a moment when we use the shank bit. Someone might ask, you know, how, Susan, do you get a horse used to so many different bits? You can't just stick a bit in a horse's mouth and expect him to know what to do with the bit. You teach him by putting the bit in his mouth and then with your hands. If you make the bit painful through rough hands, fast, too fast hands, then your horse is never going to acclimate to that bit. I've put hundreds of different styles of bits in Samson's mouth, and he rides basically the same with all of them because his trust is not in the bit. His trust is in my hands. With the snapple bit, I'm going to turn and I'm going to get me some lateral flexion going here. I'm going to see how stiff or not stiff he is in his body. Notice that every once in a while, I'll not use just direct rein. In other words, if I want him to go right, I pull with the right rein. But occasionally, I'll drape this over as if I had a shank or a curb bit. What that is doing is educating my horse right from the get-go that this is not going to be something that's going to come as a surprise to you later down the line. You're going to come to be experienced with feeling that rein right there on your neck. So here we have direct rein pressure. Pull to the right, horse goes right. In an inexperienced horse, it's very, very difficult to get vertical flexion, get that head down, which is what everybody wants, with just a snaffle bit or a broken mouthpiece bit. The reason why the pressure of that bit is pulling right or left, it's not giving him even so much as a hint to lower his head. There's always another cue other than the rein. My other cue for Samson to lower that head is to bring my legs in to him. I'm going to let him just ride for a minute like he normally would with the bit, with the snap a bit. Then I'm going to bring my leg in. I want you to watch him. Watch him tuck that head. Now we're looking at our shank bit or our curb bit. Hence, you see the side here, the curb or the shank style here. This particular bit is a miler bit. I, I told you earlier that I particularly like the miler bit. This one is called a mullen hinge mouthpiece, meaning this connection here where the snapple bit had a broken mouthpiece, this has a hinge that actually connects it right here. And it allows for some give, especially with the curve here to better shape, better fit the shape of my horse's mouth. It allows for a little more flexion right and left but it also keeps my, helps to keep my horse straight. I'm not looking to lift the shoulders as we will in the next bit we look at, but I'm looking for my horse, say for example, in a Western Pleasure class, a rail class, to go straight. I'm, I'm looking for his body to be straight. If I were working on lateral flexion, I would use the snaffle bit or the side pull. In this, I'm working particularly on vertical flexion. You have to understand the mechanics of the particular bit you have in your horse's mouth. This particular bit, and especially those that have a port, be it a small or medium or a high port in particular, when you lift this up, it turns that bit, if you will, and causes that center piece to come up into where the roof of the mouth is. And hence, it helps your horse. It's just another cue that's telling him, I want vertical flexion lower your head. Usually when you ride with two reins, especially if you're in a pleasure class or some sort of western discipline, you ride one-handed. You'll also ride with your reins. If you're right-handed, you'll ride with your reins hooped over both reins to the right like this. I typically always ride in a trainer's rein because I'm always training. But when we're in the show ring, we ride like this. We'll ask him to pick up to the jog. And I want him to stay in that frame. And let's say he should come.
come out of that frame, I can take my index finger here and just give him a little bit of a tap to remind him. This last bit that we're going to look at, if you remember earlier I showed you again, it's a curb bit or a shank bit, but it's different than the one that we previously rode Samson in. This one has independent action of the shanks. In other words, a bit like this that rotates right or left, it has the ability to help you lift your horse's shoulders to get him to come up off of that shoulder instead of just dragging around the turns or the bends. You can actually help him, teach him to lift this shoulder. One of the things I want to point out to you is that although a bit can control the direction that a horse's body goes in, a bit cannot control your horse. Now I want you to think about what I just said. A bit can control the direction that your horse goes in, but a bit cannot, will not control your horse. We're talking about, in Samson's case, about 1,300 plus pounds here compared to me. Even on my best day, we're no match as far as weight goes. So I can't muscle him around even with a bit. Look at the size of that bit compared to the size of this horse. And the mistake that many people think is that if they get a bigger bit, a, 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 more, uh, a bit with more gadgets on it, that's supposed to do some type of magic, that they can control the horse. You cannot control the horse, but you can control the direction that he goes. Every bit has a use. Unfortunately, too many folks put any kind of bit in a horse's mouth and they expect them to perform certain disciplines, and they can't. If you're going to use a bit particularly for a certain discipline, you need the bit that's appropriate for that. So let's just put this in Samson's mouth here. And let's just kind of see what we got going. Don't ever cram a bit in your horse's mouth. If you want to do something that will really cause your horse to be resistant to the bit, start jamming those bits in their mouth and eventually they'll say no way. It's amazing how much jaw and mouth pressure these horses have. He can clamp that mouth shut and you can't get it open. So make taking the bit a pleasant thing. Wait on him. Don't bang his teeth. Same thing when you take the bit out. All right, again, we've got a different bit, a different feel. So I'm going to give him a second to kind of move that around in his mouth, kind of fill it out, see what he's got, taste it, experience it a little bit there. I'm going to lift that shoulder. the port in that bit is telling this horse lower as my hands come up lower as my hands come up lower if you're a beginner rider and you're just starting out you're not going to incorporate all of the things that I did but you want to learn how to get control of the direction that your horse's body turns with your bit and with your reins. And I hope this has helped you out some. Once you get that, we'll progress and we'll start working with our feet. And eventually, we will know how to move all the body parts of the horse. And that's what we're going for. Thanks for joining me today. God bless you. All right, so now we've looked at the different styles of bits. We also looked at the side pull and we looked at the bozelle. But what I want to talk to you about now is a different kind of power. Remember that I said to you that with the bit, the bit's not necessarily going to keep a horse from running off or from doing various things that a horse might do. 
But what the bit can do in a horse's mouth is control the direction of the body of the horse. And you might also recall that I told you that from the shoulders up, you control your horse through the reins. From the shoulders back through the hindquarters, you control your horse through your, through your legs and through your feet. And so one thing I want you to understand here is that I'm not teaching you how to control your horse's body and the direction of your horse's body, the direction that he goes through your legs right now. That'll come later down the line. What we're talking about specifically today or what we were talking about was the bit in your horse's mouth. Now I want to talk to you about a different power. I want to talk to you about the power of God's word in your mouth. Just think about all the many words we use all day long. Think about how you communicate with other people. The words that are in your mouth. Maybe some of them are habitual ways of speaking. Maybe you have to think before you can come up with exactly the right words that you want to say. But you have words that reside in your mouth. God wants you to use His words. You see, it's God's words that hold the power to your life. It's almost like the bit in a horse's mouth in that the bit controls the direction of the horse's body in the same way your tongue and the words that reside in your mouth control the direction in which your life goes. If you continually speak negative criticism over yourself or over others, that's the direction your body tends to follow. Likewise, when you speak positive words of faith, words of hope, words of love, if you speak God's words from your mouth, then you turn your body in a completely different direction. You turn your body in the direction of hope, in the direction of faith, in the direction of your future, and in the direction of where you want to go. You know, we've got folks that say, you know, I want a job, but I'll never get a job, and it never works out for me, and this never happens, and that never happens. Basically, what these folks are doing is they're prophesying their future. God doesn't want you to prophesy a negative future for yourself, and yet he tells you you have power in your mouth. You have power to release negativity or positivity. You have power in your mouth to release words of death or words of life. And God wants you and I to speak life. He wants you and I to speak life over ourselves, over our mates, over our children, over our family and our friends, over our circumstances. God wants you and I to speak life over our future and the fact is when we begin to speak life for example I'm not only wanting that job I will have that job I'm well qualified for the job things are going to go good for me this is a blessed day I'm blessed in the country I'm blessed in the city I'm blessed coming and I'm blessed going God wants you to speak his word and his word is always a life-giving life-breathing word and his word tells us that that word can reside in your mouth today. There's power in the bit that we put in a horse's mouth to turn his entire body in the direction we want him to go. And likewise, there's power in your mouth. Power to turn your life around, your circumstances around. Power in your mouth to set forth your destiny and reach the goals and the visions that God has placed in your heart today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope it was a blessing to you. And I hope to see you back here again.